Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, episode 133. On this episode of the podcast, 10 Top Workplace Distractions and How to Manage Them. I find limiting myself to a daily best of seven with computer solitaire and surfing the web only for the first and last hours I'm in the office are very helpful techniques for getting down to the real work of the day. Hey, welcome. I'm Jen Swanson, your host, and you are listening to the Communication Diva podcast, where we help you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. This next while, we have a giveaway happening. And if you leave me a review in iTunes, uh, a review for the Communication Diva podcast, and email me to let me know about it so that I can reach you, your name will go in a draw for a chance to win my upcoming online interview skills course that's called How to Ace a Job Interview When You Haven't Interviewed in a Long Time. And this course is launching at the end of this month. This is July Uh, 2017 and it will be launching on my birthday actually and it will be open for registration just for one week and then we'll close it until October. So if you leave me a review in iTunes about the show you'll have a chance to win a copy um, that you can either register for and use yourself or that you can give to someone you love as a gift. So leave a review and you might just win a free registration to that course. I was writing this show's content outside on my lovely sun deck, where I like to work sometimes, where there is no decent Wi-Fi connection. And I did this on purpose because when uh, that way I can't get distracted, and at least I can't get distracted technologically. But there are birds and squirrels and people walking dogs and other things that are distractions. And, and as I was finishing writing this episode, I heard this noise down below and I jumped up and went running over to the edge of the deck and this great big raccoon, great big fat raccoon, walked past the garden shed and disappeared down into the ravine and uh, didn't pay any attention to me, but it scared me because he had bumped into a bucket or something that was down by the shed and made a lot of noise. <laughs> so there there, there were distractions, but I couldn't check social media. I couldn't check email or anything like that, which uh, I sometimes do, which I find very distracting and which I find a very big time waster. And I've talked before about batching work and about setting a specific time to do certain tasks, but honestly, I find that hard to do. Whenever my phone pings or buzzes, I I really want to look. And does anybody else find that? Uh, does any, does this happen to you? Because it happens to me a lot. <laughs> and lots of things can be classified as distractions. The problem with distraction is that it can reduce productivity. It can reduce the quality of the work that you can do. It can reduce employee morale, and it can actually put a stress or a strain on employer-employee relations. So there are arguments both ways in, in, this, uh, in this realm. There are arguments that uh, you know some employees find that they're able to take a quick internet or a snack break, and it doesn't affect their productivity. In fact, taking a break, going to have a snack, or going to look at something on the internet, see what the score of such and such a game is, um, is a way to actually be able to then refocus and get back to work. So some people find that a quick breather like that helps them to get back on task and focus very well on being productive. Other people find it really hard to, to focus and settle down to doing one thing. Some employers have become very rigid about the rules around distractions, and others are far less rigid, saying that they find their employees to be more productive if they're allowed to manage these kinds of things themselves. So there are two sides to this. What I want to share today is my list of 10 things that are known to be workplace distractions. And and I want to offer ways to manage these. And you might not find all of them apply to you. 
Some of them might. Some of them you think, oh, that doesn't really bother me at all. That's not a distraction. So take what you will from this list. These are my top 10 uh, lists of workplace distractions. And I want to give you ideas, offer you ways to manage these, whether temporarily or permanently, so that you can feel more focused and productive. And as a result, more successful and more satisfied in what you accomplish in a day's work. So let's jump into my list and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the first one is, of course, your cell phone, your smartphone. As I said earlier, the pings and the buzzes are like the bell ringing for Pavlov's dogs. You know, I I had to know who it was when my phone went off and what they wanted. And it's rather amazing when you think that just a very short time ago, there was no such thing as a smartphone. You, You didn't have a little computer in your hand or even now on your wrist in place of your watch. And you had to wait to communicate. I was even laughing recently because one of our teenagers said that it wasn't cool to use the smartphone to actually phone people on. Uh, People just don't do that most of the time. Texting and messaging is less intrusive, apparently, than phoning. And, And I got to thinking about it, and I guess that's true. I've often texted someone to ask if I could then phone them, something unheard of just a few short years ago. So it's true, we tend to use these devices as communication tools, but it's uh, less about actually speaking on them and more about connecting with text, which is interesting. So how to manage not being distracted by your smartphone if you do get distracted by it? Well, this sounds really simple, but it's not always simple to do, is to turn it off. Or put it on airplane mode or gasp, put it away in your bag or your briefcase or your purse or your desk drawer and just pull it out at break time and give yourself the treat of catching up on all the communication that you missed while you were being very productive. Most things, honestly, can wait a few hours to be looked at. Most things can wait uh, while you do your other work before they need to be dealt with. Now, of course, if it's an emergency, that's one thing, but presumably if it's an emergency and whoever's trying to reach you can't get a response out of you, they'll try calling your office or calling your work phone or something. So chances are that the earth will not stop turning if you put your phone off or put it away for a couple of hours while you try and get some stuff done. So that's the first one. The second one is social media. Of course, I want to see how many likes I get as soon as I post a post on Instagram. I want to check every few minutes too. But the problem is I can waste a whole pile of time doing absolutely nothing but checking my social media feeds and suddenly it's late morning and I've done nothing worth mentioning. And then I'm anxious and I'm discouraged and I'm upset and I'm mad at myself and I'm feeling unworthy and unproductive among many other nasty things. Can you relate to this? Can any of you out there relate to how easy it is to waste time looking at social media platforms if you subscribe to them? finding out what's happening on Twitter, finding out the latest news, because apparently all sorts of things happen on Twitter uh, first before they happen anywhere else. If you can relate to this, then how do you manage this? Well, unless your social media activity is part of your job, then give yourself some time, maybe two or three times a day to check your activity or to post things to social media and then stick to those times. And again, you can use it as a little treat, as a little reward to yourself. If you get the report that you need to finish done on time or you get it done early, you can take 10 minutes to be on social media, but only once you have your actual work done. Social media can be what they call a real time vampire as the saying goes. And before you know it, it it will just suck the life out of your day. (laughs) I'm going to continue with that metaphor. So, um, so give it, give yourself a rest from it and, and schedule a couple of times, two or three times during your day where you can give yourself the treat to check it. It may have to be on your, your coffee break or your lunch break, or maybe, uh, maybe in your workplace, you're allowed to do that every once in a while. But make it every once in a while and not every few moments or every, you know, constant having it constantly running on in the background. 
The third thing is the internet itself. This is the same as your phone and your social media platforms. The vast world of the internet can draw you in and suddenly when you're supposed to be looking up a price for someone, you're lost drooling over a new recipe on Pinterest or something. Um, Hey, it happens. (laughs) Thankfully, some companies have systems in place that block or report such surfing on their company uh, time and on their company uh, networks. So there are some places, workplaces that don't allow any of that whatsoever, unless it's work related. And I think that's actually good. Because um, I, I can see again, and I'm speaking for myself, but I can see how easy it is to get distracted down the rabbit hole. Oh, I just want to look this up. I'm just going to look up this thing. When and if it's not exactly work related, it's really easy to get lost in that vast, wide, wonderful world of the internet. So I appreciated it when I worked uh, in the hospital system and the college system where the work that was on the internet at work had to be work-related. And I appreciated that because then I could go and play on my break or I could go and play when I got home and not have to worry about not being busy doing work. So there are some companies that restrict your internet activity, and I don't think that's a bad thing in many ways. Um, Yeah, so so that's good. It might be be, um, good. If you don't have a restriction on the internet, maybe you need to just get up and start walking around and see what physical things need doing. If you find yourself continually being drawn to uh, getting lost on the internet when you're supposed to be doing other things. Maybe physically get up and walk away from the computer to do some other things that need doing. Uh, Talk with people that you need to speak with or move to a different space where you're not right in front of your computer if you can. And, uh, And get yourself physically away from this very addictive machine so that uh, so that you are aware of the fact that you're wanting to go onto the internet and do things that you don't have time to do. The fourth thing are email alerts, those little noises that happen when you get a new email in your inbox. Your job might involve email and it might not. If you need to get productive or you want to improve your productivity, then you can turn off email alerts and you can actually schedule time during your workday to check your work email. Uh, And right before coffee or or lunch break or even right when you return from coffee or lunch break is a good idea. Batch your email time together and deal with all of the messages and then leave the email alone again until the next scheduled time. And you'll get so much more done in between if you do that rather than deal with each email as it pops into your inbox. Because honestly, you won't get a lot done if every few seconds that machine is dinging unless that's your only job, is to answer email. And of course, that would be different. Number five is multitasking. Yes, believe it or not, multitasking is a distraction. It's a, it's actually physically impossible to truly multitask anyway, but it's been touted as the top skill for a long time until recently it was decided that you can't actually truly multitask. It's impossible. You can do multiple things in quick succession, but you can't actually do or concentrate on or think about two tasks at the very same time. So how to manage this idea of multitasking? Well, as with the email, batch your work. If you have to make phone calls, make all your phone calls at once and get them off your list. If you have to go meet with people, try to plan several meetings in one uh, time block so that you can meet one person and then meet with the next person and meet with the next person so that you've got all of that same kind of task batched together and it's far more efficient than if you have to stop, keep stopping. You know, you just get into one thing and then you have to suddenly go off and do something else. It's hard to get back on task and it's hard to actually get things done. So if you're able to batch things um And if you're able to batch things on different days, if you're able to do all your meetings on one day and then spend the next day doing desk work and doing other things, maybe maybe that's a way to do it. Depends on what your job is, of course. But if you have that kind of flexibility where you're able to 
uh, block set up blocks of time to get a particular type of task done, depending on what your job is, then uh, that might be possible. Of course, some jobs that's impossible. You have to take the work in as it comes. But there are jobs that you are able to uh, organize yourself within uh, the parameters of, of how your job works to be able to batch things together and be more efficient. Um, so the next, uh, the next one is number six, which is office gossip and chit chat. Now, who doesn't like to catch up with coworkers to find out what's going on? The problem is the coworker who drops in to visit too often, or who doesn't take the hint when you're trying to get something done. Or sometimes it's not even people that are directly speaking with you. It's people that are chit-chatting and speaking and laughing and having storytelling time nearby that are the distraction. So how do you manage that? Well, you, sometimes you need to get assertive and you need to say, I'd love to chat with you and I really do want to hear all about this, but I have a deadline and I just have to get this work done. Let's catch up over lunch. Something like that. Another idea is if you have a door to close your door and if you if you have a door or don't have a door, you could put up a little sign with a smiley face that says, you know, serious productivity and progress, please don't disturb, something like that. You can use a little bit of humor. But sometimes you just have to tell people that you don't have time to talk about non-work-related things right then, especially if not getting something done is going to reflect badly on you. You know, if you've got a deadline, you're, you've, got, you've got something that has to get done that day or that morning, then you have to actually get assertive and uh, let people know that uh, you need to get this done so that you can uh, then have time afterwards to visit and chit chat. So office gossip, office chit chat is great. And it's lovely to connect with your coworkers. I mean, gossip is great if it's friendly and not destructive. Uh, I should put that disclaimer in there. But, but you know, finding out how people's weekends were and, you know, what the latest uh, buzz is about, you know, the, the person that serves coffee downstairs or whatever it is that you're talking about, um, that's great. But um, if it becomes to the point where you're not getting the work that you need to get done done, then it would be considered distracting. And that could become a problem if you don't uh, get assertive about it and set some boundaries for yourself. Number seven are meetings. And I think I mentioned this in number five when talking about batching things, batching meetings. But one of my questions around meetings uh, as far as being a distraction goes is, do you have to go to every meeting that you're scheduled to go to? Some meetings are more distractions from productivity than they are even useful. I know I've sat in a few meetings when I've had piles of stuff I could have been doing. And I sat there thinking, I wish I was at my desk doing all the things that I need to be doing right now instead of sitting in this meeting that I don't feel is necessary. And... Uh, and, you know, are there meetings that can be conducted without you? Are there meetings where it would be more productive for you to be not there doing your own thing? Um, and are there, are, are you allowed or able to pick and choose? Um, are there meetings that you can join via technology so that you can cut down on the time that it takes you to get there? Now, it might be that you're in the same building as the meeting happens. Uh, it might be that you're supposed to be across town at this meeting. Um, I have gone to a meeting virtually quite a few times that otherwise would have cost me 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour's drive each way to get to for about an hour and a half meeting and then another 45 to an hour drive home. Well, that's my entire morning. You know, I'm, I'm looking at about a four-hour span there. And never mind environmentally, that is a huge waste of time sitting in traffic. Unless, of course, you're listening to a podcast, <laughs> which sometimes I do, in which case that's not a waste. But 
I have found that when I really am in a time crunch and I have a lot of things to do, it is much more efficient for me to ask if I can join that meeting via Skype or FaceTime to save that actually couple of hours of commute so that I can then do other things and be productive. So think about meetings a little bit more uh, carefully and think about whether or not you have to be at every meeting that you are scheduled to attend and whether you would be more productive doing other things in some cases. Number eight is noise, noisy coworkers, other people's loud conversations. I talked about that a little bit already, but other noise too, noise from equipment. If you work in a cubicle, this can be a real challenge. Even sometimes the, the noise of somebody, uh, you know, using their keyboard could be, or the, or playing music while they're doing that, or maybe even eating if you're that close uh, in in distance from them can be distracting photocopier noise, elevator opening and closing, microwave, things that, that make noise near your workspace. These can all be distractions. Earlier today, I was working in an office over top of a daycare center. And I tell you, that is super noisy and totally distracting, especially when these little three and four-year-olds are singing their cleanup song at the very top of their voices. Right? And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad noise. It was happy noise, in fact, but it was so loud and it was noise nonetheless. And I found it extremely distracting to try and concentrate on what I was doing when I'm, you know, suddenly listening to uh, 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 I didn't see who they were, but the uh, daycare worker speaking very sweetly to a little person who apparently was by the bathroom and was crying. And I heard the daycare worker saying, oh, honey, are you okay? What's the matter? You know, so then, of course, I'm listening to that and I'm not paying attention to what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> so, so there's all sorts of things that can distract one way to manage this is to use headphones if you are able to, if that's comfortable for you. Use headphones, maybe have your own music on or some kind of white noise. If uh, A lot of people are able to work when they have music playing in their ears. So maybe you're able to do that and have some kind of... Uh, uh, some kind of different sound in your ear that will allow you to just focus on the work that you're doing. You might be able to concentrate better with some kind of calming sounds going on in your headset. If you really need quiet, perhaps there's another workspace you can move to while you need to concentrate on that particular task that you're working on. Maybe there's a spare office or a workspace that's not being used that you could move to if things are really getting too loud and, uh, and you're able to do that. This can be a real challenge. Sometimes there's not a lot you can do if you uh, are near a photocopy machine or near an elevator. Sometimes there's not a lot you can do other than to recognize that you are being distracted and then to try and refocus. The interesting thing is that, that um, there are places that I can work quite effectively that are really noisy such as coffee shops. And so it depends on the kind of noise. There are some noises that might distract you more than others. I can sit in the middle of a very busy coffee shop and I can write, uh, you know, uh, academic papers. I can write sermons. I can write podcast episodes quite nicely because for some reason that sound turns into white noise and doesn't distract me at all. And I've been sometimes the most productive I've ever been working in a coffee shop setting uh, and, and I don't know why that is not as distracting for me as sometimes other noises are. So it depends on what you find distracting in the first place. And to recognize that you're being distracted is the first step in maybe being able to do something about it. And again, there are some places and some noises that you won't be able to do much about. Um, but maybe only temporarily you can do something about it. Number nine, hunger can be distracting. If you're hungry and need to keep taking snack breaks, that can break the flow of your work and be distracting. How do you manage that? Well, definitely you need to take your breaks. Your brain needs a break during a work day and your tummy needs to be filled up. And so uh, it's not a case of not taking a break and not leaving your desk. I think that's, it's really unfortunate 
um, that people often will work right through their lunch breaks and their coffee breaks. I don't think that's good for you. It's uh, really important to take a, a break to physically move and also for your brain to have a change of scenery and a little bit of a rest. But eating regularly so that you're not interrupted by hunger at a crucial time when you need to be focused is a good idea. Making sure you've had a good breakfast and a good lunch. Uh, maybe have some nuts or granola bars in your desk if you're allowed. One of the workplaces I was in didn't allow that because there was a mouse problem. But if you're allowed, have some you know healthy snacks that you can fill up with in between. Make sure you're eating uh, nutritious food that fills you up and uh, and that fuels your brain so that you'll last longer and you'll be able to concentrate and focus and uh, and not be. Um, worrying about what you're going to put in in your stomach. The last one I've got here is sort of follows on that. That's physical discomfort. It's too hot or it's too cold or it's really uncomfortable or the chair is too hard or too low or the lighting is poor or the lighting's too bright. When you're uncomfortable, it's really, really hard to stay on task. So how do you manage being uncomfortable in your workspace? Well, if it's temperature, a good idea is to be prepared for all eventualities. You know, have a sweater, extra sweater or or something or wrap or something you can put around you if your office tends to be cold. And sometimes it you would be surprised, but sometimes it's the summer where it's the coldest when they've got the air conditioning cranked up. And it might be blazing hot outside, but it's actually freezing in some of these buildings. And uh, so it's really hard to concentrate when you're physically uncomfortable. So having uh, clothing that you can throw on to make, to help yourself be more comfortable will allow you to then stop thinking about your discomfort and focus on what you're doing. Uh, if it's too hot, perhaps a fan or some kind of thing that will cool you, something that will cool you down, water, and, uh, and maybe layers that you can take some of your uh, clothing off in layers so that you can cool down in your office. Uh, for lighting, maybe you can uh, ask for another lamp or maybe you can ask for the main lights to be turned off and use a lamp if it's too bright. Um, things like uh, standing desks and ergonomic furniture. Some companies have allowances for things like that where you can get a proper desk chair that is fitted to your posture and your back and your height, etc. And uh, one of these desks that you can adjust so that you can stand up sometimes at your desk. I have a fantastic desk that, uh, that we use in the podcasting studio and it's called a very desk and uh, uh, we we use this and sometimes we sit at it and sometimes we stand and I am a lot shorter than Scott and uh, so he has it all the way up uh, to fit his tall height and I adjust it and it's a fantastic device so it's very very helpful to uh, be able to stand sometimes as I'm actually doing right now as I speak to you. So you want to, your distraction might actually be physical discomfort. And so figure out what you need to do to be comfortable so that you can forget about what your body is feeling and focus on the work that is at hand. Well, those are my top 10 distractions in the workplace and how to handle them. And I'm sure there are many more. What distracts you in the workplace? And what do you do about it? We'd love to hear. And you can you can let us know by dropping us a comment here at communicationdiva.com. You can write in the comment section or you can uh, use the little speak pipe app that allows you to speak and leave a voicemail, or you can send me an email at j-e-n-n at communicationdiva.com and, uh, and let me know. And be sure to go to the Communication Diva podcast in iTunes, leave a review about this show in general, the whole show, all, all the episodes, and uh, let me know that you've done that so that I can then have your contact information to enter you into the course giveaway draw. All right. Well, until next time, this is Jen Swanson saying, may you be focused in your work. May you be highly productive and may you be satisfied with what you get done in a day so that you can go out and have some fun in that glorious sun. Talk soon.